Hi and welcome, I'm Gavin Lon. This is the seventh part of a video series dedicated to building a shopping cart application using Blazor WebAssembly on .NET 6. So, in the previous part of this series, we created functionality whereby a user can delete an item from the user's shopping cart. In this video, we are going to create the functionality whereby a user is able to update the quantity of a particular product that has been placed within the user's shopping cart. A notable feature that we'll add is the showing and hiding of the update QTY button. So we only want the update QTY button to appear when the user changes the appropriate value in the field denoting the quantity of a particular item in the user's shopping cart. When the relevant field is changed, the relevant update QTY button appears. Once the user has clicked the update QTY button, to update the quantity of a particular item in the user's shopping cart, we want the update QTY button to disappear. To achieve the appropriate showing and hiding of the update QTY button, we are going to invoke a JavaScript method. This brings us to an important question. How do we integrate JavaScript into our Blazor WebAssembly component? In this video, we are going to look at how we can use Blazor's JavaScript interoperability feature to interact with JavaScript code from within our Blazor WebAssembly component. We'll implement this functionality toward the end of the video, so please stick around to the end to learn about JavaScript interoperability with Blazor. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so as to be notified of future content. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage. Any support is greatly appreciated. To start with, let's create the server-side code for the update QTY functionality. So let's get started. Let's go to the shoponline.api project. Let's open the shopping cart repository class. Let's implement the code logic for the update QTY method. First thing to do is reference the item that we wish to update. So if we are able to find the relevant item within our database and therefore the item variable will not be null, we can then update the QTY field with the value passed in from the client. And to commit the change to the database, we must of course call the saveChangesAsync method. Let's write code to return null to the calling client for when the item is not found within the database. Let's expose the update quantity functionality to our calling client through an action method. Let's open the shopping cart controller class. Let's create an action method named updateQTY. Let's appropriately call the updateQTY method on the shopping cart repository object to update the relevant resource with the QTY value passed into our action method by the client. Let's 
Let's use our convert to DTO method to appropriately convert the cart item object into an object of type cart item DTO. We can then write code to return the relevant object of type cart item DTO to the calling client, along with the HTTP code status of 200 OK. Let's include the appropriate exception handling code. So we have so far created action methods that correspond to the HTTP get verb, the HTTP post verb, and the HTTP delete verb. The other two most common HTTP verbs are the HTTP put verb and the HTTP patch verb. The HTTP put verb and the HTTP patch verb are both associated with the performance of resource updates. The difference between these two HTTP verbs is that the HTTP put verb is associated with action methods that modify a resource, where the client sends data that updates the entire resource. The HTTP patch verb, however, is associated with action methods that partially update the respective resource. So we want our update QTY method to update only the QTY field for a cart item resource. So this means it is appropriate to associate our update QTY action method with the HTTP patch verb. We can write declarative code to indicate that this action method is associated with the HTTP patch verb. To do this, we can appropriately decorate the update QTY action method with the HTTP patch attribute like this. Note that we are passing in data to the HTTP patch attribute that provides necessary root template information. This indicates that the URI for the relevant endpoint must appropriately contain the ID of the resource that the client wishes to modify. Right, let's write the appropriate code for the Blazor component. So let's go to the shoponline.web project. Let's open the iShoppingCart service class. Let's open the shopping cart service class to implement the code logic for the update QTY method. Let's first serialize the DTO that we wish to pass to the server into JSON format. Let's create an object of type string content so that we can appropriately pass the relevant data in the appropriate format to the server. Let's call the patch async method on our HTTP client object and pass in the appropriate URI.
as well as the relevant data to the patch async method. If the HTTP response status code falls within the success range, let's include code that returns the appropriate data returned from the server to the calling code. Let's go to the shopping cart base class. Let's create a method that will handle the update QTY button click event. So the calling code will pass in the ID of the shopping cart item that the user wishes to update as well as the relevant quantity value. If the quantity value is greater than zero, meaning that the quantity or QTY field value is valid, we can appropriately call the update QTY method on the shopping cart service object to call the relevant service side code in order to update the database appropriately. Else, if the calling code passes in an invalid quantity, let's set the quantity field for the relevant cart item to 1. Let's go to the shopping cart a file. Let's add an input field that will allow a user to modify the quantity of a particular item in the user's shopping cart. Note that we are using Blazor's at bind syntax to bind each quantity input field to the corresponding property of the appropriate object of type cart item DTO stored within the shopping cart items collection. This means, for example, that if the QTY property for a cart item DTO object stored within the shopping cart items collection is modified, that this modification will immediately be reflected on the UI in the appropriate quantity input field. Let's create the update QTY button that a user can click in order to update the quantity of a particular item. Let's use Blazor's at onclick syntax to call the appropriate event handler method that we have created within the shopping cart base class. Let's stand by our convention to use the underscore click suffix for these type of event handler methods. So let's change the name of the relevant method from update QTY cart item to update QTY cart item underscore click. Then we can write code to pass in the appropriate values to our update QTY cart item underscore click method.
Let's test the code. Great. So we haven't yet written code so that the total quantity and total price is reflected within the cart item summary information displayed to the user on the right hand side of the user's screen. Let's implement the code for this. So firstly, let's include two properties within our shopping cart base class. Let's include a property to store the total price of the items within the user's shopping cart and the total quantity of the items stored within the user's shopping cart. Let's create a private method named setTotalPrice, which is responsible for calculating the total price of all the items stored within the user's shopping cart and assigning the result of this calculation to the relevant property. Let's create a private method named setTotalQuantity, which is responsible for calculating the total quantity of items stored within the user's shopping cart and assigning the result of this calculation to the relevant property. Let's create a private method named CalculateCartItemSummaryTotals. Let's call the setTotalPrice method as well as the setTotalQuantity method from within the CalculateCartSummaryTotals method. We want the total price of all the items stored within the user's shopping cart as well as the total quantity of items stored within the user's shopping cart to be reflected on the UI whenever a user action results in the state of the shopping cart changing. So let's appropriately call our calculate cart summary totals method from within the update QTY cart item underscore click event handler method. The delete cart item underscore click event handler method. And the on initialized async method that is called when the razor component is rendered. So the on initialized async method corresponds to a razor lifecycle event. I've included a link below in the description for those of you who wish to read more about Razor Component lifecycle events. Let's go to the shopping cart.razor file and implement the code that will result in the appropriate summary totals being reflected appropriately on the UI. Before we run the code, we must also include a method in the shopping cart base class that updates the total price property on the relevant object of type cart item DTO when the relevant quantity property is updated for a particular cart item by the user. So basically, if for example, a cart item has a price of $50 and the user updates its quantity property from one to two, we need to change the cart item's total price from $50 to $100. To calculate the total price is simply a mathematical operation of price multiplied by quantity. So let's create a method named 
update item total price. Let's call our get cart item private method to reference the relevant cart item. Then we can update its total price property with the result of the calculation that we have just discussed. We want our update item total price method invoked every time the quantity for an item within the user's shopping cart changes. So let's implement the code for this appropriately. Great. Let's run the code. Excellent. So let's look at JavaScript interoperability in a Blazor WebAssembly component. Let's implement the code so that our update QTY button is only shown to the user when the state of the relevant input field changes. So let's first create a CSS file for our shopping cart razor component. So let's create a CSS file named shoppingcart.razor.css. As discussed, when we create a CSS file that only applies to a specific Razor component, we must adhere to a specific naming convention. Let's create a CSS class named update-qty that contains the code display colon none. So we can apply this class to the update QTY button like this to ensure that when the relevant Razor component first loads, that the update QTY button is not displayed to the user. So the next step is to create a JavaScript method that is invoked when the quantity input field is changed by the user. This JavaScript method will be responsible for appropriately showing and hiding the relevant update QTY button. Let's create a folder within the www root folder of our project named JS. Let's add a JavaScript file named shoppingcartfunctions.js to the JS folder. Let's create a JavaScript function named makeUpdateQTYButtonVisible. This function accepts two arguments. One denotes the ID of the relevant cart item, and the other denotes a Boolean value. So in order to be able to identify the relevant button within our JavaScript code, we can apply a data attribute to the relevant HTML element. So let's go to our shopping cart.razor file and include a data attribute named data item ID and set its value to the ID of the relevant cart item. The code for the JavaScript function is fairly basic. Let's use our data attribute to reference the appropriate button element. We are using the data item ID data attribute to identify a specific update QTY button.
if the Boolean value is true, we want code to execute within our JavaScript function to make the relevant button visible. If the Boolean value is false, we want our function to make the relevant button invisible. Let's appropriately reference our new JavaScript file from within the index.html file. Then we need to write code to detect when a quantity input field or QTY input field is changed by the user. We can use Blazor's at on input syntax for this purpose. One might think that the at on change syntax should be used for this purpose, but a method executed in response to the at on change syntax will only be invoked when the relevant input field loses focus. We want our method to be invoked immediately when the relevant input field's value changes. So let's implement a method within the shopping cart base.cs class that will be invoked when a quantity input field is changed. So we want our make update QTY button visible JavaScript function to be invoked when a quantity input field is changed. So how can we call a JavaScript function from within a Razor component? The answer to this is that we can use the built-in JS runtime type for this purpose. So let's create a property of type IJS runtime. Let's decorate this property with the inject attribute so that an appropriate object of type IJS runtime will be injected into our Razor component at runtime. We can then use the object to appropriately call our make update QTY button visible JavaScript function like this. Let's go to our shopping cart.razor file and appropriately call our update QTY underscore input method. Lastly, let's write code that calls the relevant JavaScript function to make the relevant update QTY button disappear once the relevant button has been clicked. Let's run the code. Excellent. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to presenting the next video in this series where we'll continue to develop our shopping cart application. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so as to be notified of future content. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and please feel free to share this video. 
with anyone you feel may benefit from this content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage. I've also included a PayPal Me link that can be used to support the channel via PayPal. Any support is greatly appreciated. A special thank you to those who have been kind enough to support the channel. It is greatly appreciated. I really enjoy engaging with you in the comments section, so please feel free to leave a comment. The latest code can be found on GitHub. A link to the relevant repository has been included below in the description. Thank you and take care.